kick things off. Alrighty, so today we are currently spectating Dale, or aka The Prophet, on Mega Random, and he's playing as Italians. Uh, I'm going to be cooperating with him, and this is interesting, he started with a watchtower right here. Um, that's obviously part of the Mega Random map, but that's the reason why that is there. He's scouting around with his scout cavalry now. His opponent today in green is Bubblyfook from over at AOC Zone as well. Both of these guys are approximately 1.7k rated, and uh, Bubblyfook today is playing as Incas. So we're going to see some um, pretty different play styles, hopefully. Uh, one thing to remember about Age of Empires, the Forgotten Empires, is that so far the changes between the two civilizations aren't that uh, sorry, not between the two, uh, between all of the new civilizations aren't that drastic. Now, you may have seen many other mods and many so-called expansion packs in the past, and um, they tend to be things like uh, like the uh, Age of Chivalry and the Hegemony one and uh, also the Age of Vampires and, and Age of all the other th things that people have made and the reason that Age of Empires the Forgotten Empires is so different to that is because it doesn't completely override the game style and the way and that the game plays and the way that the game looks. Um, the great thing about the Age of Empires the Forgotten Empires is that it is really kind of unique in the sense that it is a proper expansion it's not just a so-called expansion slash mod um, you can actually pick up any of the new civilizations without previously playing ever before and you will be able to um, instantly play uh, to your previous level without having to learn any any new things. The only things that you're going to have to learn uh, about the new civilizations are their unique units and their unique technologies and um, unique bonuses, uh, which aren't even that crucial really anyway um, until you get to a very high level of play. So as you can see, the Prophet here, taking from his deer, he's unfortunately not found many sheep. He does have two boar quite far away actually um, but I'm sure he will have plenty of food there is a big uh, section of water in the middle here so it wouldn't surprise me if he gets a dock out pretty soon as well and actually he does have a hell of a lot of deer so he looks like he's going to be fine for food for the time being um, let's have a look at the tech tree for the um, for the Italians uh, as you can see pretty standard uh, in the archery range they get Arbalest, Hand Cannoneer, they get champions, they get these things called Condotarios, um, they aren't really used very often at the moment. Their stables are fairly limited, they don't get any camel units, uh, they only get uh, Cavalier, they don't get a Paladin or anything, but they come into their own with the archers, they have great archers, and they also have the, uh, they have, yeah, they have good, 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 good um, boats, they have access to all the boats, apart from heavy demolition ship, which isn't too much of a problem and they get gill nets which means that fishing ships gather 15 percent faster which is a also a great technology to have and the Gen genoese crossbowmen as well which is absolutely awesome um in its own right especially against cavalry this looks like baltic style map um with a big lake in the middle and the opponents basically separated by this massive lake uh he's not got a dock up yet which is surprising it wouldn't surprise me if he does go for a dock pretty soon there we go with that villager right there dot going up and that means he's going to get some fishing boats out pretty soon and italians great fishers they ha will be able to research this gill nets upgrade which is just here if he does research gill nets then um he could have been in a really nice situation there as well on the water get some extra food in and of course hopefully gain some water control as i'm sure these guys will be fighting for water control at some stage in the game Pretty darn good. Uh, see a couple of fishing ships come out there. Maybe we'll see three or four before he advances up to the feudal age. Although he does have a lot of deer nearby, so he will in no way be short of food at any rate. Um, obviously as well, important to remember these guys aren't pro-pro. They are probably, well, they're not experts. They are 1,700s, so pretty above average, but uh, not amazing players. But no, no offense to them. They are still great, and it still means that we get to watch some Edge of Empires, the Forgotten Empires. As you can see then, this water is absolutely great, great uh, positioning on the dock, although saying that this is a very rich um, lake anyway, so I don't think it would have mattered too much where he put his dock, but he has got a lot of deep sea fish nearby, and that's going to really aid his, um, his food gathering rate. As you can see, fishing ships carrying 15 food and able to really give a strong boost to your early economy, um, especially your food boost as well. We'll probably see him advance up to the feudal age around 30, 32 population um, or something like that. Down to the south of the map, well, we can't really see too much because obviously we are um, spectating 
uh, I shouldn't say spectator mode, but we're in cooperation mode. Um, so we can't really see too much about what Green is doing, but I'm sure Bubblyfuck is in a similar situation with the water. However, his score is lagging fairly far behind at this stage, unfortunately. And um, that's probably due to fish or maybe lack of food. Um, as you see, there's not many sheep around on this map at all. Um, the Prophet completing a wall off with the houses here and some uh, palisade walls. He doesn't want to get caught off guard uh, by a landing force and I'm sure he will focus very strongly on the water once he gets up to the feudal age and I'm sure he will be ready to advance up to the feudal age pretty soon. Um, needs to be careful here as well. He's got a trapped villager here. It would help if he bought that villager out and uh, tried to make sure they weren't blocking each other. Uh, in there. Not too much of a problem though and as you can see a wall off being completed over here and I think that pretty much completes his wall off for now. Also luring this boar and I'm not quite sure where he's luring it to because uh, there's no villagers waiting for it. Uh, I'm sure he will... oh there we go. Uh, just getting that up. Now a little bit worrying here. Um, Bubblyfuck is already into the feudal age and that means that um, the Prophet is probably going to be very very far behind when it comes to creating galleys so it could be very likely that Green player here manages to take the water um, because it could be a little too late uh, by the time the Prophet actually reaches uh, the feudal age. It depends how fast Green manages to get out his uh, his galleys and hopefully uh, he's not going to be getting them out too fast because I obviously I'm going to kind of root for red here as I am spectating him I'll try and be a little unbiased as well so pretty slow to get the food up there and actually um, should have been advancing way before now up to 500 food and there we go as you can see up to the feudal age you may have noticed as well um, I, I probably put this out a bit late but they both started with six villagers each and uh, this is a kind of temporary uh, test addition to the game and uh, starting with these extra villagers uh, to try and make the game get underway a bit faster and oh this is not good green coming in now bubbly fuck with some harassment with galleys and if he gets enough galleys out onto the water then uh, the prophet is not going to be able to do anything at all because uh, he won't be able to get out uh, the galleys in numbers however as you can see he's throwing three docks down right there he's got two already so that makes five docks just notice this villager has been idle for quite a while but oh well. And uh, although he's going to go into the feudal age a lot stronger, he is not got any galleys right now, so he's going to be massively outnumbered on the water when um, Green decides to attack. These fishing ships being chased down, severely hurting uh, pro the Prophet's economy. And as you can see from the scores, Green is actually getting quite far ahead here. But I'm sure the Prophet is going to be getting out as many uh, galleys as he possibly can once he reaches the next age. This is unfortunate, a pretty small go uh, gold pile there, but a massive stone pile. Um, he's not got much gold at all on this map by the looks of things. And it would help if he was using his scout to scout the edges of the map and perhaps scout uh, these corners as well to find some more gold. And wow, look at that. This is such a cool map. Um, Mega Random is always good for throwing up some interesting things. Um, loads of relics in the centre of the map here on shallows. So what the, the, the person who wins the water is going to be in such a good situation because this map looks very deprived of gold. As you can see, the uh, gold here is really, really low. And as far as the profit knows there isn't any more gold on his side and he really needs to start scouting for that but if he can gain water control and that would be great if he does because that means he can claim all of these relics in the middle and he will have pretty much an infinite gold source from that and that would be absolutely great so as you can see lots and lots of galleys on the way um maybe a little bit too late though and hopefully you'll be able to take the water here upgrades none for green but i've just heard the blacksmith go up so we could see the fletching research in a matter of seconds and that would really help him out on his fight for the water but as you can see going to be massively outnumbered on the water right now and uh, going to try and get out as many galleys as he possibly can it would be great to see him take water right here because these relics in the center are up for grabs and if you can get those out if you can get those back to your base and secured, then you're going to be in a great situation. He really needs to start scouting, though. Um, I, I wish I could tell him, but uh, that would technically be cheating, so I can't really do that. But the Prophet Red here really needs to start scouting, and um, he needs to start doing it fast, because this gold will not last very long at all, and there's no guarantees that he's going to be able to get the water, so he needs to be really careful with this and sort it out. He has got Market and Blacksmith, though. Um, I thought perhaps when he got that Market up that he was going to go for a fast castle, but it doesn't seem like he's got the resources to do so. He's very 
much lacking on food and in fact he has very little food in income at all he's got these few villagers on berry bushes right here but he's going to have to either transition to farms or he's going to have to oh there we go he's luring his second boar um a bit late but better late than never or he's going to have to uh, get some more food at some point bear in mind he lost all of these fishing ships and income's a big attack now from green and it doesn't look like the prophet's going to be able to hold this bubbly fuck is retreating but he definitely is outnumbering the prophet at this stage and the prophet needs to be real careful here not to lose water it's so crucial in this game especially now as i've said many times there's not much gold on this map at all um for those of you who don't know i'm sure you are very much aware anyway um mega random is basically um as the name states extremely random uh, you never know what you're going to get in a game and as you can see this game uh, throwing in some really interesting kind of wild cards I'd call them with the relics in the middle and other things as well Bubblyfoot trying to do a split there wasn't so successful it looks like Dale uh, sorry the prophets might be able to take water here if you can get out a few more galleys he may take the edge on the water but you can never be too sure what your opponent is doing your opponent could be already advancing up to the castle age it could be very likely that Bubblyfoot is ready to advance to the castle age get out those war galleys and absolutely massacre these galleys of the prophet population capping himself again though unfortunately and oh okay so this is going to be a pretty big battle on the water right here as you can see these both of these guys going pretty heavy into galleys and uh, i think the person who manages to get up to the castle age first whilst maintaining a large number of galleys on the water is going to be in a great position as uh, they are then going to hopefully be able to take out their opponents keyword hopefully <laughs> right there and uh, hopefully the stream is okay as well um it should be okay, uh, just checking over right now, and it looks like it's fine to me, it doesn't look like it's too much lag either, which is absolutely awesome news, so that is great. Quite a lot of galleys right here as well, so we've got 16 galleys on the map already, no other military to speak of, and plenty of galleys still being created. Uh, the Prophet should probably try and get some more houses out, uh, that's exactly what he's doing. He doesn't want to keep getting population capped like this, it's not good, and it does lead to um, a lot of problems if you are constantly population capping yourself and you can't produce those all important units uh, to outnumber your opponent. Remember, being outnumbered isn't just a case of, okay, um, I'm outnumbered uh, by five ships. It doesn't mean that you're going to lose your ships and, uh, sorry, if you're outnumbered, say you're, say you're going 10 ships against 15. Uh, you're not going to leave, take out 10 of your opponent's ships. Your opponent will lose a lot less ships than you will, uh, purely because of that outnumberedness. So you want to be as little outnumbered as you possibly can. I probably explained that absolutely terribly. Um, but as you can see, Prophet moving out now, and he's going to try and do what damage he can. I don't know when those ships are going to end. They're coming out of the fog of war. Are they ever going to end? Oh, it's so hard to tell who is in the lead right here. But the Prophet does have the plus one attack on those galleys, which could really give him an edge over Bubblyfook on the water right here. I'm extremely surprised that Green hasn't got Fletching yet, and uh, that could be his demise on the water, especially if Dale, uh, so the Prophet, can get up to the Castle Age pretty quickly. Um, that would be great if he could do that, as it would allow him to upgrade to War Galley and get some extra attack on these guys with the bodkin arrow as well um and yeah he really needs to start scouting i've said this so many times already he needs to scout for more um more gold however there is a lot of stone on this map there is a hell of a lot oh just realized gone to castle age but um as i was saying there's a lot of stone on this map and stone actually sells for a decent amount so although he might be low on gold he could definitely get up a lot of stone if he hoovers this up with his villagers and sells it at the market he might have plenty of gold um in the bank uh, if he runs out here however getting this middle section of relics is going to be so crucial i imagine bubbly fuck right now uh, in green is actually building a monastery one of the first things he's going to do no doubt and starts to pick up these relics it's going to be so crucial that he does that and as you can see now, Prophet kind of pushing out. He's nowhere near to the Castle Age yet. He still needs another 160, 120, 190. Oh, God. He's, he, I said he's nowhere near, and then I realized he's actually right near to Castle Age. Um, so, yeah, he's he's nearly at Castle. He's going to try and do some economic damage. And, ooh, there we go. A massive, massive amount of war galleys right there. Um, unfortunately for Bubblyfoot, though, although he's massively outnumbering the Prophet, the Prophet is managing to take out some fishing ships. So if neither of these guys have got fishing ships, then they're going to be pretty even economically. However, uh, the, the Prophet is 
only just advancing up to the castle age. Fortunately for him though, galleys do outrun uh, war galleys. So if green here, Bubblyfuck is careful on the water, um, or sorry, very clever on the water, then he might be able to catch the Prophet out of position. However, for the time being, the Prophet just needs to keep making galleys, and as soon as he gets up to the castle age, he needs to upgrade a war galley as fast as he possibly can, because he does not want to go face to face against war galleys with just galleys. Not good at all. As you can see though, he's lost all of his fishing ships and he's going to be very low on food now coming into the castle age. Of course, once you get to the castle age and you start booming your uh, once you get to the castle age and you start booming your economy, then that is when you need all that extra food. And ooh, could be caught out of position here. He's going to lose a few of these galleys if he's not careful. Don't be psychologically fooled though. The war galleys are a lot bigger, so it doesn't mean that there's necessarily a lot more of them. They could actually be fairly even in numbers, although it does look to me like Bubblyfuck is slightly outnumbering Dale here. Uh, he's now running away, fortunately using these, the speed of the galleys to try and get away, but he does need to get up to the castle age pretty quickly so he can get these all-important upgrades, and he is still producing galleys at the docks, as you can see right here. So... He's going to need more food, he's going to need a couple of new town centres, he needs to keep checking on these, because if we press full stop here, we can see how many idols he's got, he's got quite a few idols chilling around, and he actually needs to check his idols a bit more, I think. He's got a fishing ship garrisoned in here as well, right, gill nets are available now at the dock, and war galley is being researched, uh, and he also needs careening if possible, as it does give him plus one ship armor, and it will allow him to transport extra units in his ships. So he needs to run and get the hell out of there before it's too late, because these war galleys are coming in, and they will absolutely massacre these galleys if he's not careful. Please tell me war galley's nearly done. There we go, 99%. There we go, it's ready. So now, maybe the Prophet could go for a pincer attack. He could attack from the right, he can attack from the left. And I've got no idea how loud this is compared to my voice. Hopefully it's okay. He needs to move out now, though. He really needs to. In all seriousness, he needs to take out this force from Bubblyfuck, and it doesn't look like he's got enough ships to do so. So the best option to do right now is keep producing galleys and don't give up on the water. He's already thrown up another town centre, though, which is absolutely great. And as you can see, he's starting to mine a bit of stone as well. Still a hell of a lot of idols, though, as you can see, just popping around loads of idols there. And forcing Bubblyfuck back by the looks of things. It doesn't. I don't know if he's going to keep engaging or not, but he can't afford to split his army up like that. If he splits his army, he's going to lose more ships than it's worth and it's not good to do. Careening is a must if he wants to carry on on the water though and uh, I'm going to move away from here because it's getting very loud. He also has got Bodkin Arrow already so his ships have got plus two and now he's forced Bubblyfuck away. He could be in a great situation on the water looking pretty neck and neck at this stage in the game. He needs to start getting a monastery up as well, and as you can see, going very, very heavily into stone, like I said before, so he's going to try and sell off some of that stone at the market. So once he gets the stone, he'll probably sell it off at the market uh, for the extra gold that he's so desperately going to need right now. Also, he should be thinking about getting up a monastery pretty soon so he can pick up these relics. If he manages to get all of those relics, his gold count is just going to go through the roof, no doubt, and uh, that would be absolutely awesome to see. Um, so he's going to have to sell off some of this stone for gold, and it looks like he's going to get there before Bubblyfuck does, as uh, the prices have not changed in the market yet. Also as well, if we show the, there we go, the help there, um, yeah, that's cool, I just wanted to check what the uh, coinage was exactly, I've completely forgot, it went out of my mind. Uh, so yeah, retreating again unfortunately, but it looks like the Prophet could take the water back, he has got a nice... Um, well, pretty close score, and that means that he's definitely not too far behind economically or military-wise. He is creating war galleys still, but he's going to need careening pretty soon as well. Fortunately for him, he's a bit slow getting that, and uh, a bit confusing as to why. As you can see, some of the stone has already been sold in the market. The price has gone down. And, yeah, uh, hopefully he can actually get some more gold out. He's going to need this gold to keep producing uh, war galleys, and I also hope that Bubblyfuck has also not got much gold on his side of the map because it would be extremely unfair if he did uh, have a lot of gold. Looks like the Prophet could take the water. Oh, ooh, I don't know actually. As you can see though, a transport ship there from Bubblyfuck, so he's definitely going to try and take these relics. In fact, he might have even been able to pick one up right there as well, and that is really bad. Um, university going up, so Ballistics could be on its way pretty soon. And let's have a look at how many miners he's actually got. He's got, um... Oh, look, look, there we go, 22 stone miners uh, to replace the 
gold miners and he wants to keep this state, uh, area very very safe uh, he cannot afford to let bubblyfoot take these relics and i've got a feeling that bubblyfoot managed to take one there um, so he's going to gain an immediate advantage from that but looking at the score the prophet is definitely dominating the water right here and he's still going to be selling off some of this stone at the market um, so it could be good he's not actually building this monastery for some reason uh, sorry this university i'm not quite sure why another town center going up there going to enable him to get out some extra economy and also a castle um, against his shoreline um, that's pretty good for defending your shoreline um, but I'm a little bit confused why he's decided to put it there and not build a forward castle perhaps because um, this castle isn't going to be able to help out much if he's got water control he's got water control and uh, although it's going to allow him to protect his docks uh, he's not really under that much threat at the moment as you can see transport ship there as well as well as some monks and he is patrolling over this area to make sure that Bubblyfuck doesn't get any of these relics but Bubblyfuck is going to try and get some of these relics but it looks like the Prophet's going to be able to hold him off taking out those ships at a very big rate he's got a really nice concave there actually if you look at his um, his actual ship placement for a moment there they were in a really great position and that is exactly what you want for when you're microing and uh, when you're in battles so it looks like the Prophet has got firm control over this area of the map and it's actually really really funny uh, to think about uh, the fact that they're fighting over some relics that are in the middle of a lake uh, just stranded on some shallows it's absolutely awesome as you can see three monks coming over then with this transport ship and this is going to be huge if you manage to take these and it looks like he's going to be able to as well this is really awesome to see and hopefully go on pick them up realize that they're there he's got to notice pretty soon just checking his idle villagers this this idle villager here has been idle like all game um it's really starting to annoy me um so oh no wow just as i say that he moves it excellent come on pick up these relics before you actually get caught out there we go so he's moved back to the min middle, he's going to pick up these relics, he's going to get back into his transport ship and drop them off at his monastery. Oh, and doesn't the uh, the Italians look so fabulous? God, God, get out of there, get out of there, go, 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 get out of there, go, 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 no, 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 run, move, move, get back, get back, get back, get back, get back, GB, 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 oh, okay, whoa, that was very close, managed to get out there with two relics, just... Oh wow, that was really, really close. Going to want to drop them off near the castle so that he could defend his transport ship. And could potentially lose water here. I'm not 100% whether he's going to be able to keep water here or not. Has he got careening? He could really do with careening if he hasn't. Yeah, he should get careening pretty soon. It's a pretty cheap upgrade actually. It's 125 food and 75 gold for her, for the Italians. Italians, if I am not wrong, uh, I'm pretty sure this is correct. Because I've not checked for a while though. So don't take my word 100% for this. But I'm pretty sure the Italians get cheaper docker upgrades so that means that careening is extremely cheap for him and he should get that as soon as he can to really aid him on the water looking at the scores though uh, the prophet is in a nice position he's got a, a 6,000 score lead and he is pushing out across the map here with some villagers he's almost got enough stone for another castle so he could build a forward castle and then really screw over his opponent if he builds a castle right here catches him off guard and then keeps water control as well that would be excellent as you can see as well, massively into the stone still. Has he got the stone mining upgrade? No. This is a really big fundamental problem uh, with what he's doing here. He is collecting stone to sell at the market for gold. That's obviously a given, but he really needs the stone mining upgrade. Why has he not got that yet? Um, he's got... Let's have a look how many... He's got um, 29 stone miners. Uh, this upgrade makes your stone miners gather 15 percent faster so just by getting that he's effectively added you know another five villagers onto um well, onto his stone miners so he really should get the stone mining upgrade um as fast as he can really I mean, this is a shame he's not got that already and also move some of these stone miners down to this stone here where it's less saturated would help a lot as it would prevent his blocking which it looks like he's going to do already okay Looks like he's got firm control of the water. Some of these relics have been taken again by the looks of things. Should be getting ready to move out with his transport ship to pick up the rest of the relics. That would really help him out. And he's already managed to capture two. So he's in a pretty good situation. Building a castle right up here. And let's see if he gets at some of these Genoese crossbowmen. They're always fun um, to see. Where, where's his castle? There we go. Genoese crossbowmen right here. 50 wood, 50 gold. Not too expensive. Approximately the same price as a hand cannoneer. Only uh, these require wood and not food. And uh, yeah. Also, he's got pervise or pervase, which uh, gives his crossbowmen an extra one armor and pierce armor. So that is a really useful one to have. And as you can see, another castle going up there and a siege workshop. It wouldn't surprise me if Bubblyfoot has got a hell of a lot of castles as well. Uh, sorry, not castles, a hell of a lot of stone. As the stone price at the market is going down pretty rapidly. And it would. 
uh, would suggest to me that both of these guys are selling stone for gold. He should move out though and try and pick up the rest of these relics that will really help him out. He's got another three monks in there and he is looking to get ready to do that. Sure his attention is focused down here and here we go with Genoese crossbowman as well. It looks like uh, it, the Inca player here is looking to stonewall this off and I can't remember off the top of my head, I should have done my research before this game, uh, exactly what bonuses these guys get. Um, pretty sure the Incas um, have some beastly infantry, uh, which is going to be pretty decent against Genoese crossbowmen, actually. Genoese crossbowmen, of course, effective against cavalry and less so against infantry. But as you can see, queuing up these new unique units, it's nice to see these players actually going for the new units. Always fun to see, um, as that is going to allow them to really try out new things. Surprised really that the Prophet hasn't tried to land, he should probably move out, try and take out some more water control, at least pick up the rest of these relics, that will help him out massively. And uh, zero wood right now, he's uh, actually spending his wood so fast. Still some idle villagers, let's have a quick look through, no only one actually, never mind I'll take that back. Two castles though, and if I were bubbly fuck right here, I'd be a little bit worried because my his score is really far behind, and he's not got much on the water at all, especially in comparison to the amount that the prophet has got. If he pushes bubbly fuck back here, un garrisons these, or sorry, unloads these monks from the fi from the transport ship, picks up another three relics, then it's pretty much GG for him. Not to mention the fact that he is pushing through on this side, and do you know he's crossbowman? Uh, going to be pretty average until he reaches the Imperial Age, but whoa, probably fuck reaching the Imperial Age already, and it doesn't look like uh, the Prophet is actually ready to reach the Imperial Age at all yet, so let's see what he can do, he needs to get some significant damage done before uh, bubbly fuck can get out those really strong Kamiyuks if he decides to go with that, I can't remember the tech tree for the, um, yeah, I can't remember the tech tree for the Incas off the top of my head, as I've said already, and, uh, I just seen something in the chat which I'm not too happy about, so I'm going to ban that guy because that's annoying. All right, and uh, yeah, so he needs to pick up these monks. They're just standing there doing nothing, and uh, that is not good. Uh, as you can see, though, bringing these villagers in, going to try and uh, take out this wall, uh, repair this wall even. Doesn't want to kill uh, getting in, and uh, here we go. So another three monks with three relics being garrisoned into this transport ship, and he, yeah. Good, good move by Prophet here. He wants to take out as many ships from Bubblyfuck as he possibly can before Bubblyfuck manages to get up to uh, upgrade these to Galleon. Looks like he's done that and now he's got complete water control by the looks of things. Going to be able to take out some fishing ships. Uh, definitely going to be able to take out these docks and now he's got firm water control these last three relics are definitely going to be his and that's great because that means he's going to secure six seven eight relics and the amount of gold from that is going to be way much way too much gotta be careful here we're drawing back just the right time that mangonel almost got a shot there and that would have been pretty devastating to these crossbowmen they're already pretty much weakened and that would not be good hell of a lot of food and a hell of a lot of wood though and if you can use this wood and food perhaps to go for if i remember correctly they have access to oh no they don't have access to halberdier never mind i take that back um they haven't really got many trash units they've got um they've got elite skirmishers but i don't know why you'd want to be building trash when you've got this much uh this many relics at any rate another four relics in there now and moving back out hopefully pretty soon to get the rest of the relics in the center of the map that would be absolutely awesome to see and whoa okay here we go illegal warriors coming in from bubbly fuck and capture rams as well gonna try and get these stone walls up to reinforce his his walls he doesn't want him getting in as that could be pretty devastating eagle warriors of course excellent excellent um economy raiders that'll be awesome as you can see a little bug there with the town center unfortunately that will be fixed i'm sure uh, the invisible town center uh, that's a great feature of age of empires the forgotten empires uh no that will be fixed i'm sure and oh here we go so bubbly fuck is through but so is the prophet by looks of things or very nearly through anyway and i'm sure his attention is going to be focused on this area here he doesn't want to lose um, a lot of his economies that could be pretty devastating would not be good to see that happen and these eagle warriors getting in and these are going to be great harassers unfortunately though for bubbly fuck these aren't upgraded at all they're not uh, heavy eagle warriors or elite eagle warriors as you may be aware uh, the forgotten empires does have a middle ground for eagle warriors you can upgrade them to heavy eagle warriors before you upgrade them to elite eagle warriors and um pretty strange castle placement there from the prophet uh, i'm not sure exactly sure what he was trying to protect with that but nevertheless 
And as you can see, these are warriors getting picked off pretty quickly, but Siege Ram's now coming through. And uh, these could be pretty devastating if uh, Dale doesn't manage to get out enough units. Uh, he's not really got any uh, any units, so to speak, of just the Genoese crossbowmen. And uh, this town centre could be going down if he's not careful. Although saying that, he has got a lot of villagers in there. He could just take out the Siege Ram with his villagers. Perfectly possible. As, yeah, I'm not sure um, exactly why he's not doing that, actually. His villagers are perfectly safe. So he could be doing that right now. Finally got a trebuchet up over here though, and it's going to break through this wall pretty soon. Carry on, carrying on creating the Genoese crossbowmen. The final upgrade, uh, Silk Road, isn't going to be useful in this game as it is. Um, it does mean that trade units are 50% less um, in price. So they're not going to be so useful as there's no trade in a single player game unfortunately. And here we go with a monk wallalaw in everything. Uh, let's just put the sound effect there for good measure. Damn, I muted it. I unmute. Oh god, it didn't work. Never mind. I just wanted to say wallalo. Oh, but, oh dear, this is not good. Prophet losing a hell of a lot of villagers here. Even though his uh, military count is... Sorry, his score is a lot higher. He is losing these villagers, and that's not pretty. He's got to be very careful here not to lose too many. And he is finally, by the looks of things, breaking through into Bubblyfuck's side. And he's been met with a castle. So this game could last for quite a while. And if, if you actually notice, uh, just notice this. When the Genoese crossbowman dies, watch this real quick, I've just noticed. When the Genoese crossbowman dies, it turns into a hand cannoner before it dies. That's a really interesting kind of bug. I don't know if that's a bug or not, but I'll tell Cision about that for sure. He might be able to fix it. Looks like it turns into a hand cannoner before it dies. I, I'm pretty sure it did. I can't be sure though, 100%. But this is really bad now. Um, the Prophet is losing a massive chunk of his eco, and he really, he's, he's got no... No resources, so to speak of. He's got a lot of stone, he can afford to get up some more castles, and he certainly affords to sell off some stone. But he's losing so many villagers, and this is not good. Only 140 population, and 50 minutes into the game. Not a great place to be right now, but he has got four relics, and they are going to be sustaining some of his income, gold income at the very least. Genoese crossbowmen, not the best answer though to uh, eagle warriors, as eagle warriors do have high pierce armor, and uh, Genoese crossbowmen are pretty powerful, but I don't think they're going to be powerful enough in this situation. Here, yeah, yeah, the Prophet needs to start building some... Ah, there we go, perfect, hand cannoneers. Hand cannoneers, as we know, do have an infantry attack bonus, which is going to make them super, super effective against the eagle warriors, and that is exactly what we want to see. Um, Killing off these eagle warriors with the hand cannoneers, that would be absolutely excellent. Unfortunately though, hand cannoneers have approximately 0.1% accuracy as they're constantly missing. And I can't believe that the Prophet is um, actually facing this threat and um, he should have been a lot more prepared for this. Uh, but good choice though with the hand cannoneers, needs to get some more up. Uh, however, he does still have the score lead and it looks to me like he's going to be pushing out through here. He's not managed to get through even though he's got two castles. I'm sure his attention is much more focused at his home base. I think just about now, now just about managing to repel this, but his economy has been so shook up in this um, in this affront uh, that his economy is absolutely shredded at the moment. He's got a hell of a lot of uh, a lot of farms, but he's not really got much wood or anything. And I've only really just noticed that he's got so much over here. Um, so many town centers and just a little pause here. Hopefully, it won't be too long as we are streaming. I'm just gonna check the chat real quick. It looks sexy, yes it does, that's uh, Italians for you, looking pretty sexy, and kind of newbie, it's GG, well I don't know, uh, look at this massive economy over here, he's got another three town centres over here, and uh, he's got a lot of wood and gold, and oh hello, by the way, <laughs> I should have said hi first, uh, yeah thanks everyone for watching, this will probably go on the YouTube as well by the way, um, so if you're watching this on YouTube, thanks to you as well for watching and subscribing and shiz, and Dale is ready to go, so we're going to get on with this and carry on. Banana, banana, banana. Yeah, go. Come on. Don't want to be sitting around. I don't know what he's saying. <laughs> I don't speak Czech Slovakian. <laughs> okay, there we go. Right, so it looks like the Prophet has repelled this uh, this force from Bubblyfuck, which is great because it now means that he's going to be able to protect this side of his map. And I only just realised, actually, my, my bad, that he does have quite a good, well, big economy over here. 
needs to keep his villagers working though, there are a hell of a lot of idols, let's look how many idols he's got, something along the lines of 17 idle villagers, that's not good, he needs to get them, get them to work, and still so much stone on this map, it's a pretty strange map to actually um, behold in a sense, there is so much stone, so that means so many castles, and that means that we're in for a long game by the looks of things, Profit though is still in the lead score wise and he really needs to start breaking through here. He started his attack on this area of the map for like, I don't know, like 20 minutes ago and he's still attacking and he's not got anywhere yet. So unfortunately for him, he's not broken through, but he still has water control and this could be the game winner for him if he manages to take these last three relics. Come on man, get your monks into your ships and start collecting those relics up because that is going to give him so much gold and with that gold he's going to be able to get more hand cannoneers and he's going to be able to get more Genoese crossbowmen as you can see. 38 food and 43 gold. Actually that's a really good point. Italians, um, get cheaper gunpowder units so the hand cannoneer is like an amazing choice to go with in fact i'm going to say that amazing choice for hand can oh, i can't spell cannon there we go because uh yeah they get cheap hand cannoneers so as you can see they're supposed to be 50 gold but they're only 43 and also they have an infantry attack bonus so that makes them extremely effective against um against the uh <laughs> yeah with this amount of gold um but yeah, uh, basically, I think Bubblyfuck now has realised going heavy into hand cannoneer, so he's going to go for skirmisher. Makes sense. And throwing down another castle right there. So many castles, they're absolutely everywhere. And I just I hope to God that he manages to like get through this wall. Otherwise, we could be here all day. He really needs to like start breaking through here and uh, starting his assault. Although he is almost population capped, so he's in a nice position. I'm sure his economy isn't actually that bad. He's just got a lot of idle villagers, and I'm sure he's going to be putting them to work pretty soon. So hopefully, we're going to see a pretty good engagement soon. He's got a lot of hand cannoneers. Needs to be wary of, of the, what are they called the skirmishers. Needs to be very wary of those, and it might help as well if he kind of scouts around a bit. His scouting isn't amazing in this game, unfortunately. And I just had trebuchet created. So are we looking at trebuchets over? Ah, yeah, there we go. Another trebuchet there, and this trebuchet gonna try and take out this castle, no doubt. And this trebuchet over here gonna be taking out this castle back here as well. And Whoa, this uh, this is a pretty long game and a pretty intensive game at that. These elite skirmishers could do so much damage to the hand cannoneers, so he needs to be really careful. Although they're extra cheap, uh, he still can't afford to throw away gold like that. I mean, bring them back, man. Bring your hand cannoneers back, otherwise you're going to get owned. Uh, you need some... He needs some, uh, should I say. Uh, infantry he has no infantry to speak of and he has a pretty good infantry line he could get condotarios or he could get champions um uh, obviously champions are probably the best bet at this stage but he could really do with getting some champions out at this stage to deal with the elite skirmishes that would be a great help if he managed to do that and uh, he should think about doing that pretty soon still not collected these last three relics up in the middle and it wouldn't surprise me if bubblyfoot manages to get those actually um he's not been paying much attention to that at all and oh this is really good might be able to take out this monastery here which would be absolutely great uh because yeah that means that bubblyfoot would lose the relics that he has got and therefore be more uh more or less out of gold and, alright, fair enough, good choice with the mangonel. We're going to be able to take out a lot of elite skirmishes with that if he doesn't get in range of the castle. And he could land indeed, yeah. Um, a condotario is basically a... Um, it's a bit like a long swordsman, only it's available in the castle age without any upgrades. And it's supposed to be gunpowder resistant. So, you know how um, hand cannon is? are super effective against infantry i think condotarios are resistant against gunpowder fire um if i'm correct something along those lines and now would be a good time to use that mangonel to take out these um these elite skirmishes they're in a tiny place and if you manage to get the mangonel on there you could take out a massive wodge of these elite skirmishes it would be great to see him do that and he probably should do that um also as well if i was uh the prophet i would keep my my ships by these relics so that he can't go and collect them up again it's not sure why he's not doing that but ooh, moving in with a siege ram and now if he focuses his attack on two fronts then he could be in a great situation also as well it might be worthwhile to actually delete some of these war galleys they're not proving much use at this stage in the game and they're not going to be much use to him at all uh, once he transitions into land so um, 
Maybe losing a couple of galleys in favour of some more crossbowmen would be a good idea. But he certainly has a lot of resource and even coming in with some light cavalry now as well uh, to try and break through and do what damage he can. These light cavalry are going to be able to take out these trebuchets darn quickly. And uh, god damn, those uh, trebuchets are going down. I sound so American when I say that. That's terrible. Um, Incas get good range skirms. Uh, yeah, they have uh, 8 range, which is average. I, I'm not sure if he's fully upgraded them, though. I can't remember off the top of my head. Uh, there's so many new things. And why didn't he take out the uh, the trebuchets? Not 100% sure why he didn't do that, but he's certainly in. And certainly going to try and do some economical harassment here. And, ooh, that looks like it took some mangonel fire. And it wouldn't surprise me if those skirmishes did get on the wrong end of the mangonel right there. And also as well... Um, missing, uh, some, yeah, I don't know, I don't know what you could do in this situation, you should probably go and try and land, um, landing here would just really screw his opponent over, and, uh, especially with some infantry, he needs some infantry, siege rams coming in though, gonna take out these trebuchets, like one, two, dead trebuchets, there we go, one more hit, I'm sure they'll be dead, boom, dead, take these last relics, god damn it, Please, just take the relics. As you can see, Bubblyfoot has already... He had four relics here. He's already taken one of them back to his uh, monastery, as you can see, just over here. And so many towers and so many castles. It's going to take ages to take all these down. And these guys don't want to give it up uh, in a hurry. So these hand cannoneers, unfortunately, pretty useless unless uh, Green starts to go with, um, go with Eagle Warriors again. And it doesn't look like he's going to because Eagle Warriors are pretty expensive. So, yeah... Oh, their ratings are 1,700, just above average. Um, I think the Prophet beat me, so the Prophet is red, by the way. And, uh, yeah. And I want to see some Siege Towers. They're always fun to watch. Uh, 220 wood, 120 gold. Um, they're pretty fun. You can garrison uh, Jinui's crossbowmen in there, or you could garrison anything in there, actually. And uh, they would fire out from the, from the tower. And... Okay, this is a little bit risky. Building siege workshops in this position, which is going to be in range of the castle, probably. Um, yeah, this is just a little bit of a stalemate at the moment. So much food. Let's have a look at the market prices. Um, everything's sold out at the market. And, yeah, that would be bad. If he gets guilds, though, um, he's going to be able to uh, make some extra use of the market. But, for the time being, that's not going to be an option, really. And these villagers are going to get owned. <laughs> Don't really know why he's just throwing them away there. And, yeah, not really much happening on this front either. Maybe some more light cavalry would be a good idea. Or well, they're saying that he has queued them up to a population limit. And, oh, I don't know what he should do in this situation. Moving out with elite skirmishers. Um, 5 plus 3 range on them. 5 plus 3. Same upgrades, actually, for both of these guys. And... Here we go, Manganel coming in. It could be really great if he upgrades to Onager or Onager. That would do so much damage if he upgraded to Onager and piled some Onagers in there with the trebuchets behind and the hand cannoneers. That would make a pretty unstoppable force. Not sure why he's not doing that yet. He probably should think about doing it pretty soon. And yes, this map does have a lot of stone. Well noticed. Uh, yeah, exactly. They have sold a hell of a lot of stone um, at the market because there was no gold on this map. Remember, there was only the there was only the gold at the start, which was two blocks, and then the rest was just stone. That's the only income. And as you can see, these hand cannoneers getting massacred by these skirmishers. And here come the Kamiyuks. This is going to be fun. I want to see how well Kamiyuks do um, here, but. I don't think the best choice because they are going to get decimated by hand cannoneers. Um, so unless these hand cannoneers are taken out, the Kamiyoks are going to be pretty much useless, uh, unfortunately. And finally, it looks like the Prophet is going to break through here and his economy must be a lot stronger as he is in a much better position um, in the scores. I want to see what he's doing here. I want to see what he's going to do. Um, He's got to break through here. He's going mass skirmisher, which isn't amazing. He's running out of wood, actually, as well. And, in fact, there isn't much wood left on his map at all. So, it's going to be a case of who runs out of wood first, or who just runs out of units first. I'm not really sure which one it's going to be, but this is definitely a long game. And, yeah, it, a massive lack of gold as well. Could be possible that... Um, Bubblefuck loses his castle here, which would be great news for the Prophet. Uh, even though he is managing to make a push through here, res responding with pikemen from Bubblefuck as well. And these galleons now managing to do some damage at the shore. If he can take out these villagers and prevent this castle from going up, then he's going to be in a nice position. It doesn't look too promising though, actually. And that would be a shame if he doesn't manage to get these 
Uh, but it looks like it's finally swinging in favour of the Prophet at long, long last. I uh, need to take out this castle and um, really start to kill off Bubblyfuck. It looks like Bubblyfuck is getting overwhelmed here. He's either running out of trash resources or he is running out of gold resources. He's probably ran out of gold actually altogether. Um, as... Uh, the Prophet is already out of gold, as you can well imagine. Um, Genoese Crossbowmen would be great against Pikemen, I think. Um, they have a pretty high attack, so they would be pretty effective in that situation. And also, as well, he's not upgraded to Elite. He doesn't have the device upgrade. So his Genoese Crossbowmen aren't really performing as well as they could be. Uh, his, this castle, possibly going to go down. Pardon me, possibly going to go down. Probably trying to get some repairs on that, but too, too many trebuchets to deal with and as you could probably tell uh, it's very tiring commentating for a whole hour and 10 minutes straight on a game um, but this castle gone up and Prophet forced away with his, these uh, galleons now and now these galleons are forced away that means that Bubbly Fox could be able to pick up this last relic and still why has he not got the relics three relics in middle man I want to tell him this because if he had these three relics, he could have won the game already. Um, the extra gold from that would have allowed him to get so much more gold units and so many more upgrades. He would have won the game by now if he had these relics. He's still at water control, so please pick up the damn relics. That would be really awesome to see. Thank you very much. <laughs> uh, as you can see as well, three trebuchets firing upon this castle and I hear archery rangers going up at the back. So 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 many like cavalry being queued up if he had a few more stables uh, his he would be a lot more efficient in producing units um, and woohoo not good halberd is now uh, needs to start getting out the hand cannoneers again because he is sending these like cavalry to their deaths as you can probably imagine um, halberd is absolutely kicking ass right here perfect unit to counter cavalry um, so he needs to start getting out some more hand cannoneers not skirmishes hand cannoneers um, pick up these relics and you'll be able to afford a lot more hand cannoneers I think you'll find this castle still stands, and once it goes down, which is going to happen pretty shortly, I can imagine, unless his trebuchets just keep missing like they keep doing. Um, this is terrible. His, his trebuchets are so bad at, at aiming. Um, then he might be able to push through this area and take a double pincer kind of attack effect. Um, really needs to get out more hand cannoneers here, though, as he will lose all of his like cavalry to the... Um, to the halberdiers. I'm not actually sure where those halberdiers went. Maybe they withdrew, but they definitely didn't ca kill off the light like, cavalry. That is for sure. And uh, I think the prophet as well needs to be careful with his gather points. His gather points are set here. His, ga <laughs> his gather points are set here, so they're basically running straight past their enemy. He needs to set his gather points about here in order for them to be effective. And yeah, that would be awesome. Hi, Katsuni, by the way. Hello. Ah, uh, this could be bad. This is looking bad for the Prophet on this side, but it's looking fairly good on here as he's pushing through with a hell of a lot of skirmishes right now. And these skirmishes could do some intense damage if they do get into uh, De uh, Bubblyfoot's base. He can't sacrifice this side though, as the majority of his remaining economy is on this side. And as you can see, there's like no wood left on this map at all. I think though that he is going to be able to start gathering wood from here as he's secured this area of the map so that means extra wood for the profit and that means he could be in a better situation and yeah i think he should mix in a few more like cavalry perhaps over here as well as some more um hand cannoneers to deal with the halberdiers that would make a great unit composition these skirmishes need to move forwards, which is happening. And finally, 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 um, picking up the last of these remaining relics in the middle. And that should give the Prophet the edge, just to tip him over and win the game. That would be that would be great to see. Some, someone winning this game at some point would be awesome. Castle going up there for the Prophet, and that's going to allow him to keep the pressure on. And he can afford a lot more castles as well. Um, not sure what's going on here. His skirmishers just absolutely spazzing out, getting approximately zero kills. And uh, but he looks like he could be able to get this castle up, and that would be great. Finally, 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 picking up these relics in the centre of the map, and that would be awesome to see him take the lead now with this extra gold. He's got so much food and so much stone remaining. Unfortunately. Elite Eagle Warriors coming out now, and they're going to take out those trebuchets, or at least take out a large chunk of these skirmishes. Bringing in the Galleons, great response there. Going to be able to deal with the Eagle Warriors now without too much trouble. Should be able to keep these trebuchets safe. Really useful. And these skirmishes are going to be absolutely cut to bits in this corner. They can't fire. <laughs> oh, 
This is terrible, this is painful to watch. These skirmishes can't fire because their minimum range uh, doesn't allow them to hit the elite uh, eagle warriors. That is so funny. That is absolutely funny as hell. Uh, unfortunately though, he has been walled in and he's going to have to use the trebuchets to break the wall. So that attack wasn't so successful as he was probably hoping. Over at this side though, Bubblyfuck still holding on to his ground and... Elite skirmishes, so he needs more light cavalry as response to that. Keeping himself population caps, and this game does not seem like it's going to end anytime soon. And could possibly get this castle up. Could bring some more villagers down, perhaps. Looks like he's going to do that, bringing villagers down now. And bring this... God, God damn, get the relics. They're so important. Um, we're an hour and 16 into the game. He could have had the relics, uh, these extra three relics, for another another 20 minutes at least and that would have given him enough gold to win this unfortunately he's not done that and it's absolutely getting a bit painful to see him not doing this oh ho, ho. they are going to be some dead skirmishes right there um unless that mangonel gets taken out no 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 those skirmishes are going to die he took out a huge chunk with that mangonel boom oh look at his population just drop as those skirmishes got so caught out <laughs> so funny oh man Possibly could get this castle up still though. I'd love to see this castle go up. And I'd love to see him actually make some progress on this side of the map as well. Um, at least now he can produce some more units, I suppose. At least he can spend some more of his resource. That would be great to see as well. Trying to focus his attack on both sides. And I think the best thing to do in this situation is just like fortify wall this like a million times. Oh. Finally, uh, Bubblyfuck has said good game, and uh, sorry if I sounded a bit too relieved there, but an hour and 15 is a hell of a long time to be commentating for. Um, but I was going to say, another tactic he could have used was wall this off with about 20 um, fortified walls, and then just focus on this side. Uh, that would have paid off a lot more. But as you can see, GG anyway, and... Uh, yeah, I've just realised that. They could have played to a 250 population, uh, but that wasn't in the setup. So, unfortunately, that didn't happen. And, yeah, so GG, um, the Prophet took that one. Could have took it a lot sooner if he took those relics, but I've said that enough times now that I'm driving myself insane. So, I'm going to go back.